So Digital Foundry is asking a very, very interesting question here. They said, why doesn't ID software license ID tech if Unreal has so many issues? Now, I thought I'd listen to this video, just a little bit of it, or maybe the whole thing. We'll talk about some areas and some aspects that I think might, you know, enlighten a lot of people what this whole engine licensing thing can look like. Because right off the bat, and I haven't watched a video before, I saw its title and I kept it. I said, we're going to talk about this on the, on the channel. If ID Tech licenses this engine, they will now become a an engine support system, uh, you know, company in that sense. They'll have to get a team that helps people to support the engine and update the engine for their needs and all this stuff. And then people are going to start putting in requests. It really defeats the purpose of having them focus on video games. That's it. Because I can tell you that no engine is perfect. And that engine, even though it may have rendered Indiana Jones and done a good job, that is all in a sense, not even in a sense. That is in every sense a credit to the development, the leadership, and to the tech team behind this particular uh, you know, feat of very good technology. It's all they're doing. However, I'm sure that they can tell you that there are still areas that could be improved, and you're only going to see much more why Unreal Engine is, in a sense, invaluable right now in the industry. Let's kick off with this one from 8-Bit Voxel. Hi, DF Crew with Indiana Jones and the Great Circle having implemented pass tracing on PC while running on a branch of id Tech 7, Motor. Are you confident the same treatment could be coming for Doom Dark Ages, possibly with an official id Tech 8? Your thoughts on some additional RT enhancements we could see or what could push the envelope even further in your opinion? Alex? Well, Alex isn't here. But don't worry, we've got opinions. Um, <laughs> we've also got this question from Peter. Indiana Jones reminded me how brilliant id Tech is. It can clearly manage wide open spaces, has great scalability, and can support advanced ray tracing features. I'd love to see Microsoft slash Bethesda license the engine and thus see more devs use it as an alternative to Unreal Engine. What are your thoughts on this? And indeed, do you think it's even viable? Uh, interesting questions. Um, John, let's tackle the first one um, about part tracing on before they even go in i think it tech gave um a little they gave a little like slice of their engine for doom for a, like a creator engine in a sense let's see it tech that's what you call them i call I, i've always called them id tech yikes i guess i should call them id tech so uh id software if you go under here i think they have like um they have like a little engine that they give you to go ahead and do mods and all of that stuff if that's something that you you know that you're interested in so there is a there's a slice of it out there in terms of being able to create stuff i need to find it, it was here uh a few weeks ago but i just i just thought that was interesting at the end of the day uh doom the dark ages i think from my perspective the question is um they're two very different games right yeah um, the thing about um, path tracing is the kind of temporal stability. Um, you've got to have like really fast response um, on stuff like RTGI. Um, and if you're in a sort of Twitch shooter like Doom, I'd worry it just wouldn't update quickly enough. That is for sure. A lot of people talk about path tracing and all of these new features. But again, I think these might be distractions. Again, you know, the, the distractions are very clear that if they start worrying about all this stuff in games like Doom, when they never did have to worry about them before, then it might put us in a place where the games are not as fun as a lot of people have, you know, come to like them to be. And that's just a reality. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, I don't know, bro. I, I, I strongly believe that sometimes, you know, Gamers can start asking for too much and then, you know, they put themselves in a really weird place where after the developers get to meet a lot of these uh, requests, the developers have basically no time or, you know, they have not enough resources to focus on what is really important to them, which would be, you know, the game itself. Let me see. And they're soft under their software side. That's what I'm still looking for. Oh, yeah. Look, they have the creation kit. And I think they also have an ID kit of some sort. I've seen it here before. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm tripping. So they finally get to the answer to the main question, which is them licensing it. And all the way down here in the video, they, they give it a little treatment. Because, again, they spend all this time just saying, like, you know, trying to implement it in games like Doom. 
probably were not were not there where the hardware can support it. Again, like I said, these are distractions, and sometimes gamers are very funny. I guess you know we're curious about these things, but again, you know, technological advancements that have come from many many years are not easy to execute in disregard. Yeah, I think we're talking about two very different use cases here. Unreal Engine is built from the ground up to be a middleware for developers, and it's designed to be yep, accessible. Yep. It's it's kind of like the engine for everyone, if you like. Whereas IdTech is designed for, for id, you know games. for id and its affiliate studios. Yep. You know mm -hmm. the vast majority, if not all of which, are actually technologically really, really competent. competent and they know <laughs> what they're doing. And I think right. id just doesn't want to support it, right? Exactly. Many people don't realize how much support goes into basically making an engine good. Yes, Epic Games, they made Unreal Engine for themselves, you know, to make their, uh, I think, Unreal Tournament and all of these other, you know, engines. But licensing it was a really smart business idea because it was already very good to cook up a bunch of games. Now, I'm looking at Unreal 3 and a little bit of what I know from Unreal 2, I've heard from another developer. And then they were able to only license it to big, you know, third party publishers and they had to support it because the fee was high. I think in Unreal 2, I heard a developer that uses Unity, he makes videos on YouTube, say that you needed about a million or two million to be able to buy into Unreal, to be, not buy into, but to be able to go ahead and license Unreal 2. Unreal 3 may have been even much more. I mean, look at the Arkham games, look at Arkham, uh, you know, Arkham Knight, uh, Arkham City. These games are just fantastic games unreal uh, arkham asylum 2 arkham origins all unreal games i think unreal 3 for all of them right now when you think about it you know you got to think and say okay how much support did they actually provide to warner brothers because these studios you know people leave and people join and people leave and people join so all the knowledge you may have given to them you know they would take that knowledge and go elsewhere so when they come back you you know you have all of this stuff already set in place and places that they can pick up from and learn like that's yeah the whole the concept of, of support yeah mm -hmm. uh, the ability to turn an engine that's really good at certain things into an engine that's good slash competent at everything is like a gigantic undertaking that i just don't think id tech uh sorry id software have got any particular interest in doing very true many people don't really realize that with unreal you can make a wide variety of games with that engine Yes, it has its technical challenges, it has its technical difficulties, but all the disparaging around Unreal Engine to me, and it's coming from a lot of people who have never touched a game engine before, is just quite surprising. Like, you know, they'll, they'll say stuff like, oh, Unreal Engine is bad for everybody, but nobody really realizes like, hey, it's a very versatile engine that has access to many different games, you know, at the end of the day. So when you go ahead and think about it, I'm of the mind that we are in a place right now where if a game development firm decides it wants to support an engine, it really has to have resources and have a pipeline and patience for that engine to mature to the point where then people, you know, games can start making money and then they can be paid for it. Because if they go with an upfront model and say, okay, pay us $2 million right now to use, you know, it tech, you know, it, it techs, uh, to use it techs engine, right? No one's going to want to... Who's? How many indie gamers have $2 million in their hands? How many of them can afford that? But Unreal is like, don't worry. When you sell a million copies, give us 4%. That is a better deal than anything else because it's already used its big AAA money to f establish something. It used Unreal used to have, according to some reports I've heard, used to have a subscription service, but they canceled and refunded money back to everybody and said, don't worry. When you make your million dollars, come back to us. So all the talk about Unreal Engine is coming from people who do not know, you know, what they have to offer from, say, uh, you know, uh, a financial perspective for new indie developers at the end of the day. And they come out and they start saying this stuff. And I have to go and say, what? Because Unreal Engine 5 games by some developers are giving issues. Nobody ever highlights the games that are doing well. You know, that's the thing. It's easy to, to you know, lean towards negativity over everything else. And it's quite interesting when you actually saw, you know, there is uh, the Starfield example, of course, where um, there's the story of it going in to help optimize the game. What they didn't do is say, OK, let's bring all across all of this stuff from mid tech. You know, that's no. just not, not what they did. They just we could ex we could say the exact same thing about Unreal Engine games. People who actually know what to do going in and act and helping to optimize games that are challenging. 
Uh, Threat Interactive, uh, you know, the YouTube channel has been talking a lot about optimization lately. They're making their own games and they provide a lot of possible solutions. I strongly believe that that studio should more than likely just focus on being a studio that can help developers optimize and plan out their games. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of people that are thinking about engineering solutions in studios or they have the resources to bring in people like that that can help them with their games. For crying out loud, Ubisoft can optimize almost anything on any, and that's Ubisoft. I mean, the Ubisoft that everybody makes the punching bag of the gaming industry, most of their games run fine, and they use multiple engines across the board. Basically went in there, found the areas where they thought they could add some optimizations and did so, and uh, with relatively good results, I'd say. Um, but they certainly didn't import, uh, you know, in tech, that's, that's just you know, different engines, different use cases, different outcomes, really. So I guess that really does that that really does leave everything here to say, yo, what Unreal is doing for the gaming industry is a big deal. As gamers continue to get better, we're going to see better results. The thing, too, is, you know, Unreal is wild in a sense because it does have a lot of iterations that come out every single time. Like, you know, right now we're in Unreal Engine 5.5, which has brought more advancements, more improvements, and a whole lot of things. Uh, and now this Unreal Engine, the, the, these, this new set of Unreal Engine updates are coming for the animation pipeline to allow for developers to be able to do way, way more with animations and such. And it's looking really good, man. Like, it's, it's looking really, really beautiful. Um, you know, with all kinds of really cool stuff, but a lot of things are experimental, right? <laughs> In a sense. So you, you as a developer, you know, you almost, with Unreal Engine, you almost have to sit down and say, okay, here are the available uh, resources for us in our regard that we need to go with. And then just, you know, brace yourself and jump right in because at the end of the day, you know, what you get is what you get, but it is still in quote free multi-million dollar software free for you to make your game if that's something that you want to do and then go from there let me hear your thoughts in the comment section thanks so much for watching the video i really appreciate you guys this time and audience i know this game engine discussion is one that's you know kind of out there but it's one that needs to be had because i keep seeing all this talk here on the internet and a lot of people are not paying attention to what they're demanding thanks again for watching peace out